Adam Toledo shooting. We now have body camera footage. This is a story that comes out of Chicago. Adam Toledo was killed by a Chicago police officer. He was 13 years old. Awful story, awful video. I watched the video. We're going to go through some of some clips. We've got, I think we've got a little bit of video on this segment of the show. We want to piece together what happened here because you have to ask yourself, you know, when law enforcement shoots and kills a 13 year old, what the heck is going on, right? We've got questions for the officer. We've got questions for the 13 year old. We've got questions for the parents. We've got questions for the community because this is just a tragedy through and through. And people are already trying to pick sides and turn this into a political thing, which is just to be expected. And so we're going to try to make sense of it as objectively as possible. So I want to start by going to the New York Times. This is Coming from Chicago, as I mentioned, the video is released of the Chicago police fatally shooting a 13-year-old. Shaky, fast-moving video was released in Chicago on Thursday. It shows a police officer chasing a boy down a dark alleyway, yelling at him to stop right now. The officer screams while cursing at him, telling him to drop his hand, drop his gun. Hands, show me your hands, drop it, drop it. As the boy turns, his hands lift. Single shot rings out, he collapses. The boy, Adam Toledo, was killed 13 years old. Release of the body camera footage set off a fresh round of consternation over police conduct in Chicago, even as it stirred debate over what images grainy and graphic actually showed. We're going to look at some of these today. Activists announced protest against police abuse for downtown Chicago. Mayor Lori Lightfoot called for calm, even as she grew emotional, talked about the death, calling it excruciating. Adam, who lived in Chicago's little village, is predominantly Latino in a predominantly Latino neighborhood, was one of the youngest people killed by the police in Illinois in years and it was a really hard video to watch i actually watched the unedited version of it and you, I mean, you get to see a young man just you know his last breaths right in front of you it's just it's just terrible so uh, i'm not going to play that though we have uh some more story to get to it says in the shooting in chicago which took place in the early morning hours of march 29th so not too long ago officials have said that two officers were responding to reports of gunfire when they saw two people in an alley and started chasing them, prosecutors have said that Adam was holding a gun when he ran down the alley as an officer called for him to stop and drop the weapon. Adina Ortiz, a lawyer representing the Toledo family, said at a news conference yesterday, the video shows that Adam, who was Latino and a seventh grader, was attempting to comply with the officer's orders. So we got to take a look at that, right? What, what was going on there? He tossed the gun. If he had a gun, he tossed it. The officer said, show me your hands. He complied. He turned around as the officer identified in police reports as Eric Stillman, 34 years old, fires a single shot. Adam is raising his arms and appears to be empty handed in the moment before the shooting. The Times analysis shows Adam can be seen holding what appears to be a gun behind his back, which he drops behind a wooden fence just before he raises his hands. And it is a split second. He is just just dropped like dropping it and turning gun and he shot and killed after firing the shot officer stillman called for an ambulance search for the wound began cpr with the help of another officer stay with me he wrote lawyer for stillman who is white said the shooting while tragic was justified given the nature of the threat the police officer was put in a split second situation where he has to make a decision lawyer at the firm of grayson thompson that was retained by the Fraternal Order of the Police in Chicago. Officer Stillman has been placed on administrative leave for 30 days, joined the force in 2015 after serving in the military overseas. Few details of the event that led to his death emerged in court in the past week. We have Ruben Roman, who at the time is a 21-year-old who authorities say was with Adam at the time of the shooting. He appeared in a Cook County courtroom on Saturday. He was charged with felony reckless discharge, unlawful use of a weapon and child endangerment. So we have another person who's also being charged with a crime. $150,000 bond, which is a significant bond. According to protesters, video captures Mr. Roman and Adam walking together down a street on the west side around 2.30 a.m. Holding a gun appears to fire several, several shots at an unknown target. So they, they were just you know, shooting guns off in the air at 2.30 in the morning. Mr. Roman holding a gun fires shots at an unknown target. In recent days, Adam's mother said that she had no idea that he was out that night of the shooting. She thought he was safely in his room at the time. Adam had been missing for several days, she said, but had come home and gone into the room that he shared with his brother. So that sounds great, right? Kid's gone for several days, comes back home. Oh, there you are, son. Going to bed now? Good. See you in the morning. Okay, 
Sure. All right. So let's take a quick look at this post over from uh, James. James Ho, 16, responding to Mr. Andy No, said his hands were up when he was shot. You're dishonestly posting a different pic. So we have body camera here, right? And this is a scene from the alley. This is a young man who's no longer with us. So you hear about 2.38 in the morning, Axon Body 3, March 29th. So the gun presumably is right behind this, this wall. So somebody here, right, if you, if, you know, this is, this is a problem like with video. It's like you can take a still shot and it looks terrible, right? There's no gun that went off right there. His hands are up. There's no gun in his hand. But then you go to the original image, right? And here it is. So Chicago police have released the body camera footage of the police shooting death of armed teen Adam Toledo, who was known in the gang circles as Little Homicide and Baby Diablo. So you can see the gun here, which I'm guessing is sort of the other side of this fence, right? So on the back end of this fence. So he was standing somewhere over here. See a gun right there. See a gun right there. Looks like it looks pretty clear, right? And so you can see, I don't think we're going to play the video. Maybe we will. We have, you sort of have him with the gun and he's just like dropping it, dropping it and turn pop. And that's it. Like, like a 10th of a second. I mean, just insanely fast. So, uh, you know, so then we have uh, this now, listen, I, I really do not want you to consider this to be sort of blaming the victim, right? This is a 13 year old kid. I'm going to show you some images, images that are being posted by people in his community that are uh, very interesting, but he's a 13 year old kid, right? There's, there's really nothing you can do to blame him for any of this. If there is uh, some cultural, you know, uniqueness to this, to this person's upbringing or whatever, that's on that, right? He's 13. He doesn't know anything that's going on in the world. And so if he's being sort of in, in, ingrained into this community and, celebrated for some of this stuff that's that's about that not about him so let's just be let's be compassionate to him and his family but we're seeing some interesting stuff coming out right very interesting things for a 13 year old son boy in america very weird very weird let's take a quick look so andy no posts tributes to deceased armed teen adam toledo by his friends refer to him at, by his gang names what little homicide baby diablo what is going on here? We have rest in peace, Lil Homicide. 52607 to 32921. We've got some, you know, interesting images here. We have guns and and you know, gang signs and all sorts of it's just it's strange. It's I don't know what what that is all about. Well, let's take a quick look and we have another video it looks like of a different angle where this is Adam Toledo, who is sort of walking around the side of the vehicle there. From a surveillance camera, if you look carefully, it looks as though Adam Toledo may have dropped something behind that fence. Now, we've slowed this video down to show it again. Who's and, doing that? and this is Adam Toledo that you see on the right side of you. See, so there's the gun. So there was a gun. He drops it, turns around, gets shot. He wasn't shot, according to Greg. He said he wasn't shot just before his hands were up. The police had too little time to react. He had a weapon in his hands. He threw it before putting his hands up. Police could not see that. So he was shot. His hands were up after being shot. Slow motion, the video. And let me just see. Yeah, we're not going to play that because I don't want to I don't want to show that. But it, there is a video. If you want to download the slides, you can watch this. It's a super slow motion version of the video. And it's basically you're watching his hands go up as the, the gun is going. I mean, it's, it's basically simultaneous. Right. So if, if the officer saw the gun like we saw the circles and he's turning, your shoulders are turning, everything's moving, triggers pulled, he gets hit. It's just it's just awful. Very, very, very close call. So if you want to watch the actual video, download the slides or just go find it on the internet. It is everywhere. We have CBS now, of course. They uh, looks like people are alleging that they modified the video. CBS News edited the video. This comes over from the federalist.com. 
to mask the teen was holding a gun before he was fatally shot. So we know CBS is just garbage in general because of what they do uh, on 60 Minutes and elsewhere. They deceptively cropped the body camera footage that showed a 13-year-old boy holding a gun before he was shot. Law enforcement official fatally shot Adam Toledo during an encounter. Police said that he ignored verbal directions, fled, used significant force, was armed with a semi-automatic pistol, which is why the officer fired body camera footage released this week appears to show Toledo holding a weapon moments before he was shot. But CBS News posted a clip to its website and Twitter page that cropped out the footage showing the team's alleged firearm. CBS News article cropped the video, did not directly acknowledge that he was armed. Instead, the corporate media organization aired opposing claims from Eric Stillman, the law enforcement officer who said he shot Toledo because he was faced with life-threatening and deadly force. Toledo's family attorney, who claimed the gun was not in the team's hand when Stillman fired off the shot, CBS News did not respond to comment. While a semi-automatic pistol was recovered at the scene, multiple politicians like Lori Lightfoot claimed there was no evidence the teen fired the weapon before he was shot. Which, is anybody saying that? Failed Democratic candidate Andrew Yang also tweeted that he was unarmed during the incident. So here is a response to that, right? Everybody's doing the red circle thing. Child was killed in Chicago, said Andrew Yang. He was unarmed. Not really, right? He's kind of right there. Looks like a gun. They found a gun. But everybody's spring-loaded to just take the narrative. So we have Jerry Dunleavy. And we have the CBS video that they have cropped out for us. CBS News shared a version of the police body camera footage where the right and left edges of the video are trimmed away, meaning that the portion of the video where Toledo was seen holding a firearm at one point is no longer visible because it is just now off screen. So you can see that here, right? Now you you can make the argument that maybe that's cropped For uh, well, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but you can watch the you can watch it again. It, it, it's just cropped, right? So you can't see that side of the fence. So it yeah, it does. It looks like he's unarmed because they cropped the video. You can't see it. All right, the case incident report is now here. You can see this says assault, aggravated a police officer with a handgun. We've got police officers, 34 years old, born in 1986. Eric Stillman, nothing really that interesting here. Nothing to read, it looks like. Original case incident report from Chicago Police Department. Outcry grows as Eric Stillman, the officer who did the shooting, is now identified. So people want to know who he is. He has been uh, placed on administrative leave for 30 days. Already talked about that. 10th District Patrol Officer, been in the department since 2015. Three complaints and four use of force reports have been filed against him between 2017 and mid-2020, which records police interactions with the Republic, with the public. This is coming from the Invisible Institute. Among the allegations filed by citizens were two that claimed improper searches of cars and use of force violations. However, information on the disposition of those still unclear from the records. City Civilian Police of Accountability, they investigate cases like this. They release 17 body cams, four third-party videos, transmission of the communication, 911 calls, six shot spotter recordings, as well as response and arrest reports related to Adam's shooting. So there is a lot of material to dive through there. In a lengthy email to the Associated Press, Stillman's attorney, Tim Grace, said the officer had no choice but to shoot. The juvenile offender had a gun in his right hand, looked at the officer, which could be interpreted as attempting to acquire a target. Began to turn to face the officer, attempting to swing the gun in his direction. At this point, the officer was faced with a life-threatening and deadly force situation. All prior attempts to de-escalate and gain compliance failed. Here is Officer Stillman. So we've got, uh, looks like, according to the Invisible Institute's most recent data, Stillman has three complaints for use of force. We have pointed 2015, 34-year-old white man, complaints... So we have one from October 11th, 2018. This one was unfounded, looks like. found Finding was unfounded, a search of a person and property. We have another complaint from 2019, so uh, November. He was one of three officers. The civilian said that he was illegally stopped and searched during a traffic stop, did not give officers permission to search his vehicle. Complainant says that it was he was stopped due to obstruction of view. He had a cell phone mount on his windshield. You see these freaking cops? Cell phone man- mount on his windshield, so they stop him, they pull him over. Oh, my God. He alleges that one of the officers was verbally aggressive and rude. 
Not a surprise. Complainant also alleges that accused officers did not activate body-worn cameras until he asked, is this being recorded? So, investigation is still pending, no finding. That all sounds exactly, that sounds like that absolutely happened. I believe that for sure. Fourth Amendment improper search. Civilian, the accused officer allegedly unlawfully searched the uh, reporting party's vehicle during a traffic stop. Allegedly removed a small razor that he had in his vehicle. Closed, no findings. How about over here? We've got takedown, emergency handcuffing. That was from 2017. Another open hand strike, 2018. Wrist lock, takedown, emergency handcuffing, 2019. No action in 2019. Let's take a look. All four reports have callback numbers indicating that someone was likely arrested. No one has member actions, meaning the officer might be claiming injury while not claiming to use any force. All four subjects are black men, later 20s or older. Interesting. Interesting stuff. All right, so that's what's going on with the Toledo case. Don't know whether or not uh, anybody's going to be charged with a crime on that, but it's certainly under investigation. So we'll see if that officer gets charged or if they subpoena a grand jury for indictment. Well, who knows where this will go. Let's take some questions over from locals.com at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. If you want to join in on the fun, Jeremy Matrita is in the house says I have skied on snowblown snopes. It is possible. Someone owns a snowblower and created the snow. It's exactly right. Case closed. Not guilty. Well done on your first verdict there, Jeremy. Nicely done. We have, Ma Fox in the house said, remember when you remember when we said that following officers instructions can lead to your death? Here is just one example. In my opinion, another spook cop that gets too trigger happy. We have open carry in the U.S. You should require an active threat to use lethal force. It's good. That's a good, good, good observation there, Ma. It's a good point. Also, not that it really matters in the end, but the gun was unloaded. If you look at the first slide. Oh, I did not know that. Was it, un, was it unloaded or was it empty, right? Because if they were shooting guns off in the air, uh, maybe that's what happened. But, yeah, it's a good point, right? You have open carry. The, the officer presumably didn't know how old this guy was. And, you know, this is, this is the tricky part with the cops, right? This is where it gets iffy. The cops are... They're, requ they're required to wait. That's where they make their money right? You talk about this, right? Michael Jordan, why was he the best of all time? You know, arguably my opinion, but you can debate that. I'm not even a sports guy, but let's just say that. Why? It's because he made the ball in the hoop when it mattered, when it counted. Nobody cares if you make the basket when it's, when you're up by 20 points, that's irrelevant. Nobody cares about that. They care about the last second. That's why Jordan was so good. That's where he makes his money, right? It's that last putt that you get. It's on those marginal areas. The best surgeon in the world handles the, the, just the slivers, a tiny fraction. That's where they make their money, right? The defense attorney, we make our money in, in where, where it's that one idea. It's that one critical element that we can do that nobody else can. For the police, it's that split second. It's that weight. That is where it counts. That's what they're trained for. They have to have a little bit more discipline than the rest of us. Okay. Anybody can go out there and just shoot somebody and, and say my fault after the fact, but the, the police, they make their money. They deliver the goods on that split second. So while you and I may watch this video and say, gosh, you know, that's kind of a 50, 50, or you may watch this and say, oh yeah, easily a clean shoot, right? Very risky. Or you may say, no, should have waited that half second longer. It's a very reasonable argument. That's why we give the cops the power that we do because we expect them to wait. Part of the job is to wait. Yes, it's risky. Yes, that split second, it might result in them being shot or it might result in an officer seeing he didn't have a gun in his hand and not killing a 13 year old. It's that split second. And so you can you can pick either side of that. And both sides have reasonable arguments. Thank you, Ma. Very good point, Mom. We have Liberty or Death says, this was absolutely tragic, but on initial appearances, it looks like a clean shoot. I honestly feel bad for the family and the cop in this. That's a good point also, Liberty. You know, there's not always going to be a lesson in everything. You know, there are going to be just tragic things that happen. 
And oftentimes as people, we try to make sense of it or use it to fit it into our worldview. You know, we're going to take this and maybe you already have a disdain for cops and you say, see, look, another bad cop just shot a kid. Ah. And so you just take this incident and you just put it on your bookshelf along with all of the other books that you have that help you justify why you don't like police. You take that and just file it over there. But sometimes it doesn't belong on that shelf. Sometimes it's nothing to do with a bad cop. Sometimes it's just a bad situation. You got a 13 year old kid running around at two 30 in the morning with a handgun loaded or not, presumably shooting in the air. Uh, his friend who's being charged with crimes was you know, charged with, they probably got some good evidence for him. We saw they have a lot of evidence elsewhere. Awful. Did, did, a, did we need to kill a 13 year old kid? Probably not. But What's a, what's a cop supposed to do? We just saw that New Mexico cop just got wasted. Horrible story for pulling so, uh, over a drug dealer. He just pulls him. Hey, I see a handgun. Can you step out of the car? Steps out of the car. Cops just, just dead. Just a total animal monster. Somebody without any shred of humanity just, you know, executes an innocent man. And so you got to have some sympathy for the police too. This cop's 34, running around Chicago. They're killing everybody, killing each other all the, all over the place in Chicago. He's running through the alley on a weapons call. Kid had a gun. What's he supposed to do? And so sometimes liberty, I think it's just a tragic situation. You know, we can try to draw conclusions and try to extrapolate a lesson and a principle from it. But sometimes life is just a dump, just the worst. And this is one of those situations. We have Jay Bone says, Clean shoot, but sad, pathetic progressive policy and the shirking of personal responsibility should be lifted, listed on his death certificate. Yeah, gosh, shirking of personal responsibility. <laughs> Look, I shouldn't laugh at that because this is a somber story. That's a funny comment though, right? This person, cause of death, shirking personal responsibility. You know how many people would, would have that on their death certificate? You know, we have a lot of heart, heart disease in this country. <laughs> Where does that come from? Ugh. That'd be like half the country. We have Liberty or Death says, did you hear that Ben Crump has rushed the kid's family to sue the city? No, I did not. I guess he doesn't see a narrative he likes. 134 people have been murdered so far in Chicago this year, but let us riot over this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen the numbers. I didn't realize it was that high. That's a lot of people. 134 people in Chicago just killing each other. It's a lot. Good to see you, Liberty. We have Ian from Oz, number one, says, this just seems like an absolute tragedy. Had the kid just dropped the gun at his feet or raised his empty hands without turning, it is reasonable to expect that he would still be alive. Yep. Yeah, I think I think you're right on that. You know, it, it is, it's sort of the turn. It's that, it's that turn. You can't tell how old, it, you know, how old he is. As soon as he hits the ground, as soon as the officer approaches him, I, you can just sort of tell it's a kid. You're like, oh my gosh, it's a freaking 13 year old kid just the worst. We have LT13. Does the officer have any legal course against CBS? I don't think so. I mean, you know, for, I'm not, I'm not real sure that they're alleging anything in that statement. It's sort of, is, is it, is it a testimonial statement that it's just cropping the sides off the video? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a civil attorney and, and may and sue those types for under those types of claims, but I would guess not if I had to take a guess. John Delar 52 says, did the parents report him missing? Seems to me it's the parents' fault. Can't they be charged with something? So yeah, there's all sorts of child endangerment statutes and child negligence and uh, you know vulnerable population type of laws that typically children and adults, you know, uh, seniors, people who are sort of vulnerable because of their age, uh, that, that they can categorize those things into all sorts of juvenile laws and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, they he could have been charged with something. The parents, probably just asleep at the wheel. Kid was gone, it sounds like, for a couple days. And they just didn't even know about it. Comes home. Mom thinks he's asleep at the wheel. Doesn't even bat an eye. You know, unless there's more to that story. Maybe he was at his grandma's or his sister's or whatever. Maybe this is a common thing. I don't know. But what we read in that story didn't make it seem like something that was quite normal, right? If your child who's 13 is missing for a few days, kind of time to hit the panic button, I think for most families in America. But what do I know? We have tremendous says, I feel that those that immediately declare that each death fits the narrative are hurting their cause. I agree with you. It's hard to take these people seriously on the cases where circumstances do fit the narrative. Yes, if you're going to cry wolf about everything, then nobody's going to believe you when you cry wolf again. Didn't your mother ever tell you that story, folks on the other side? My mom told me that. She said, hey, if you come to me complaining about all this stuff when you really need something, I'm not going to believe you. I learned that lesson pretty quick. So if everything is 
cops are racist murderers, then when we actually have a racist murderer cop, is anybody going to bat an eye about it? Because it sounds like even in, in, in situations like this where it's a close call or you can have reasonable disagreements, you know, you can, I can see it from both sides, truthfully. It's, it doesn't feel to me like a Derek Chauvin, George Floyd situation, right? It's not like that. It's something different and we should be able to talk about it in a way that reflects its true nature. Next up, we've got Patriot Musk in the house. Love that. Love that Musk. We want to get it. He says, Rob, not sure if you've done one, but if you haven't, I think you should run a stress shoot course at a range to understand how the body, body automatically reacts to threats. I have never done one. Yeah, I would love to do that. Center mass will be the focus while everything outside of that peripheral is a bit off. I, I do believe that. Yeah, I do believe that. And I don't have a, you know any experience in that particular uh, category, but I know the concept. I, I sort of know when you're under stress and high stress situations, you get kind of that tunnel vision. I've done a lot of, you know, mixed martial arts and, uh, you know, wrestling, really grappling. And you sort of get kind of the same thing. I think that w what you're talking about, you sort of lose sight of some of the other things. Your brain is overly optimized for maximum ROI. And, so, you know, the training and the, the lizard part of your brain just kicks in. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I saw, right? Like I kind of saw when, when somebody's turning like that, the brain is just instinctually reacting. Now, again, the officers make their money there. They're supposed to sort of overcome that autonomous reaction. They're supposed to put a speed bump in there where you and I maybe wouldn't do that. You and I, up. Oh, they're supposed to have that specialized training. That's where they make their money. That's the value that they deliver. It's that weight. It's that split second. I know it's a hard ask, but that's why the country considers many cops to be heroes because they take that extra sacrifice that you or I wouldn't have the stones to do, right? We would just go up, oh, shoot, shoot, fire the gun. These cops got to wait, pause for just a minute and really be sure before they take action. We have Ma Fox says, I think a lot of people miss my point. When a cop tells you to put your hands up and drop the gun and you do it and then get shot. I mean, what did you want the kid to do at that point? No, I'm, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I, I mean, I, I, I think you have a very valid point and I think a ton of people agree with you on that. And I'm not sure that I disagree with you. Right. I mean, he, this is a close call. This is a very, very tough one to analyze. And so I'm not trying to take a position one way or the other. Uh, you know, typically I think cops should have a little bit more delay, but I watch the video and I'm like, oh, you know, gosh, it kind of looks like it kind of a, you know, quick, fast, aggressive turn a little bit. And so I can sort of see it from the officer's perspective as well. But you're right, right? The kid does drop the gun. We don't know how sort of, well, we do know because we see the cop get out of the, out of, out of the camera, out of the vehicle and then start chasing him. So are there alternatives? Yeah, I think you could. I mean, oh, mom. Well, look, be nice to Ma, right? It's a valid point. It's a valid point. It's a good argument, and I don't disagree with it. We have Blue Collar Worker in the house says, Rob, if that 13-year-old doesn't know what was going on in the world, how would he know to run away from the police and ditch the gun? He knows what he's doing. If he shot and killed someone, the state would charge him as an adult. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right on that. I think we've seen 13 is young, but didn't we just see some 15-year-olds, I think, get charged for something? Oh, the – oh. No, it was the uh, the two the two girls who tried to commandeer that uh, Uber driver, right? Uber Eats driver. I don't think they got charged with anything. Or uh, juvenile resolution. They're not going to serve time, I think, and then they're going to get out of custody by the time they're 21. They were 14, right? So maybe he would have gotten a similar situation, a similar deal to, to those gals. Oh, man, awful story. Just awful. Thanks for talking it through with me. I know it's not a fun one, but has to be done. So those questions all came over from watching the watchers.locals.com. And uh, we'd appreciate your support. If you want to support the show, that's the place to do it. So head on over there, sign up, ask questions throughout the show, download the slides, get a free copy of my book. All the goodies are over there at watching the watchers.locals.com. All right.